Hey folks, Mike and McGee here. As you see, I've got a very large wild boar. It field rests 192 pounds. That's pretty good size for a wild boar. At least the Tennessee Ranger. Them things don't get that big by and large. So, we're gonna get this thing skint down and we're going to cure with salt, basically the whole thing. And we're going to smoke with smoke, basically the whole thing. And we're gonna can it in jars and see how it tastes. Let's do it. All right, this is the ham from the big wild boar. This is the other one. I've got the back back in here. We got shoulders. We're doing cure and smoke before we can. So in order to cure these things, I don't want to just leave this outside as is. We didn't leave him in the cooler very long, so he's going to be pretty easy to fillet off this membrane. The reason I'm doing this gets rid of that fat. We were starting to get a little bit of taint in the fat. Not bad, but enough to where I don't like it. And also, when we skint this dude outside in uh, 16 degrees, we didn't have good access to water to wash it with. So by cutting this off, we're taking care of both. We're killing two birds with one stone, basically what I'm saying. And so that'll be very easy to take off just like that. Once I get that done, we'll get it in the salt. It's time to take this out of salt. The wild pig has been in the salt for five days. That's just about perfect. I'm gonna take it out of here. I've got <laughs> mangalitsa bacon on top that's got to come out. I think I'll just toss over in here. That's a whole different video, whole different story there. But I'll just give you a sneak peek. It ain't little, that's big. I mean, that is like a, a fourth of one side. This is a wild hog ham. Big old hind leg. Here's its litter mate. This is a back strap. This is a shoulder. We only lack one of each and we'll have them all out. And here we go. This is a wild hog. Still got some pink coloration here. It's been below freezing ever since I put this in. That part right there actually needs a little more salt. I don't like that coloration. It's not bad. It's been 10 below and that all points in between. It's not bad, but it's gotta be salty. So anyway, there we have it. An entire wild hog. I'm gonna wash these off right quick and get them in the smokehouse.
right, the time has come for us to get our wild hog out and get it cut up and canned in jars. It really looks good. We filleted off the outside edge and we just have the pure goodness and that does look amazing. I love cured meat. Of course, a lot of the moisture has come out of it now. Nice and dry, ready to go. I'll show you, this is a back strap. Look at how dry it is, it just stays straight. That's gonna be some good lean meat, won't have to be deboned. And of course we have the shoulders here. They're looking good. I can't wait to start cutting these off the bone, getting them stuffed in jars. Let's do it. almost like jerky almost not quite it smells really good it smells that good smoky you could probably eat it just like this but not a wild hog not me I ain't into that a little too a little too risky all right I'm really looking forward to getting into this when you deboning an animal like this a deer a hog either one Go down here and hit that bone and just ride that bone and then you get to the blade, shoulder blade, ride that shoulder blade up. That whole piece comes off, you got that whole chunk. Now, this is dry, you know, it's been hanging there for a couple of weeks. Let me get rid of this salt. Now, if that was deer, I'd just eat that just like that. That'd be called dried meat or whatever. But it's not deer, it's wild hog. So I like to have my, my canned ham when I'm getting it out of the jars in about half inch to three quarter inch pieces. So I take it like this and make these little squares like this right here. You get that out and you put that in some potato soup or some pinto beans, anything like that. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. It's fairly dry, easy meat to handle. You can see in the center, it's still look, got some color to it, some red. So still got moisture in it. So it's very easy to work with. It's not at all limber, hard to work with meat. So I'm gonna get into this and just start laying it on it because there is progress to be made. And anytime I come across a piece of fat like this, it's gonna be discarded, not used because this old boar had a little bit of taint in the fat. It wasn't in the meat. We ate the, the lean meat. The kids loved it. Everybody enjoyed it, not the fat. So I'm gonna fill this bowl right here with meat and we'll start filling jars.
still just cutting away here and as you can see Cynthia is stuffing jars because it's getting late and I am feeling very pressed for time. This is the first hind quarter. I've done one shoulder and both back straps. That's what you see right here. So all I have left is one shoulder and one hind quarter after this. It's yet to be seen how many we're gonna get in these jars or how many jars it's gonna to take to hold it all. We're rolling now, let me tell you. here that's enough for two canners exactly we still have a hind leg and a front shoulder to cut up but time is of the essence we got to get them canning we can cut meat while they're canning so we're going to start out by putting a tablespoon of sucanat sugar in each jar sucanat is a very raw sugar and it really smells and tastes a lot like brown sugar but it's easier to dissolve even than that. It's very natural, we use it all the time. And I'm gonna put one in each and that's gonna help neutralize that salty, smoky mess. And you're gonna make it good. We made a sugar water last year when we did it. You might remember, we did this exact thing last year with the wild hog. But this year we're opting for just simplicity Throw the sugar in the jar like that. We will take spring water and fill the jars just like this. And with that meat being so dry and not, not uh, what would you say, molded into each other, it's gonna allow this water to flow down in there a lot easier. It's gonna not be as much trouble as I had last year trying to get the water to go down into the jar. So I'm just gonna finish pouring these up and we're gonna get them in the canner. It's been an hour. Ooh, it's 
stone floor you can set anything hot as you want in there on the floor and it's gonna be fine won't hurt a thing this here will slowly cool off we do not pull anything loose let no arc, you know pressure out just let it cool naturally let it do its thing somebody asked me recently to maybe do a tour of my summer kitchen or tell how builders and all that it's not real fancy Maybe this summer when we get out here good, I can go over it. But the main thing was this floor, these are just stone steps that I bought at the hardware store. And I put down the layer, that Durock, down on top of my Advantech, which is a flooring, subfloor. And then I just put the mortar down, laid my stones. So between the stone, the Durock, and the mortar, it's at least two inches of not combustible product is just fine if fire if a if a log rolls out of the stove for some reason on fire it ain't gonna hurt a whole lot it may give me a heart attack but we like our summer kitchen that's for sure we even use it if we have meat that we don't need more smoke getting on hang it out here does just fine all right this is the next morning and as you can see it's cold steam coming out of my mouth. I'm gonna pull the canner up here. Mm. There's obviously no pressure, no heat at all. We're gonna open this bad girl, bad boy, whatever it is, up. Mm. And we will see what our canned ham looks like. Hopefully it's sealed. Oh look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all sealed nicely. And there we go. We will wash these jars up. I like it. Filled up just exactly where I left the level. Hasn't changed at all. I was thinking maybe the dried meat would swell up, make it overfill, all this stuff, you know. When you've canned for a while, you start realizing things can go wrong. Nothing went wrong. Looks absolutely perfect. I can't wait to pour some of this in a pot of pinto beans or in some potato soup or in something else. I don't know how we'll try it. Maybe I'll take a jar of it over to the neighbors and see what kind of ideas they have that might be good with it. Let's do it. All right. As you can see, we've got noodles, we've got cheese, and we've got meat. And we're going to go ahead and put the ham in, stir it up, and we're going to see exactly how the family likes it. The young kiddos here have very high standards of quality, but between you and me, we already know they've eaten from this animal already and liked it. I think we're in great shape. I think this is going to be a hit. If it's not, it'll be a hit somewhere else. <laughs> Folks, we have got our, in this case, it's a mystery meat. Some think they know what it is. I know what it is. Let's go ahead and try it real quick. And then we'll let the ones that don't know what it is guess first. All right, boys and girls, let's try it. Now, it's okay to let mom have a taste. She hadn't had any yet. Uh, Mr. Lucas is going to share with mom. I'm going to give y'all one. Yeah, and that is, you have sat here and eat this animal before, the same exact animal. So, it didn't taste anything like this though. First of all, is it good? That's what I, that's, yeah. that's number one. Mm -hmm. So we've established it's good. Now number two, what is it? Mm. What kind of cormorant What's that? are we eating? Either a beef or pork. Either a beef or pork. Well, mm -hmm. you're you're on target. Does Mr. Pork. pork? Okay, you're on target. Do you know which kind of pork? Pork butt. Pork butt. You mean the shoulder or the ham? Well, let me tell you, it is. Ham. It is both. It is shoulder. It is ham, and it is the back meat. That was a lot of work. I knew it. So. 
So I got it. Well, we got to we got to go a little further. Was it a what type of hog? What type of hog? Yes. That's what it was. Okay, Miss Gray. Mango eats that. No, not mango Oh, I know. Wild. Wild. Wild is Lucas. right. <laughs> Hey, that's fine. It's a tie. Tie always goes to the girl, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. oh, oh, right. Pancake Mountain Girl. <laughs> People Pancake love that. Mountain People girl. love that comment. There you have it, folks. I wanted to do the taste test in a unique manner, and this is about as unique as it gets because it's Yamazetti. I don't know that I've ever had Yamazetti outside of this house. This is kind of localized to me. I can't wait to try it. But unfortunately for you, you're not gonna get to see me do it because the kiddos, they did the job for me. If you get a chance on a wild hog to smoke, no, 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 to cure it in salt, smoke it with your smokehouse and can it in jars, this is what it's gonna taste like. And guess what, kids? <laughs> there is a tablespoon of sugar in every quart. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get out of here we hope you have a great day we'll see you on the next video